entire division. Their performance in division size operation was regarded as an important test. At Dung Da, a fire base 13 miles in Laos, Marines were fighting a North Vietnamese regiment in an attempt to capture what is believed to be the supply complex for an entire North Vietnamese division. The infantry was in contact two and a half miles away. This is a second marine fire base in Laos. It's located atop the Korak Mountains, which the North Vietnamese used three years ago as an impregnable fortress for the shelling of Khe San. Now Marines have it and are using it against the North Vietnamese units still here. The Marines and the Arvin generally have the initiative in Laos. Much of Arvin's long-term prospects would appear to depend on how long they can count on American air power or on how quickly and effectively they can develop.
simple repairs are handled by a quick fix. If the trouble can be repaired in a couple of hours, the men at the front line base do it, and the machine goes right back in action. Most troubles are more serious. For these repairs, the helicopters fly back to forward bases like Quang Tri. If they can't be flown, they're lifted back on slings beneath the bigger birds. Aircraft fire over Laos may well be the worst ever seen. This is what a 37 millimeter shell does when it goes through a helicopter. One U.S. pilot was shot down three days straight over Laos. Each time he was rescued and went right back. The 8th Transportation Company can handle more sophisticated work than in the field. But even here, some things are beyond their capability. Those helicopters are steam cleaned, taped up, and sent back to the... Most of them arrive here, the Army Helicopter Repair Facility at Corpus Christi, Texas. They have been shot up, hit by mortar attacks, crashed, been shot down, and some are just 45 a month. Because of the time it takes to recover helicopters in Southeast Asia, then ship them here, this repair base hasn't really begun to notice an increase from the combat in Laos. It will in about two weeks. 540 helicopters will be repaired this fiscal year, the most ever. Testing because these are complicated machines. But from the top and sent back into combat can be... The weather here isn't good. Overcast skies and constant drizzle bog down traffic leading to the border. But this all changes farther west in Laos. It is clear and dry. An American artillery was set up to support the invasion and they were busy trying to knock out North Vietnamese artillery hidden in the surrounding hills. So far, the drive's been slow and contact's been light. South Vietnamese commanders admitted that they weren't really looking for the enemy troops. They only wanted to find their supplies. So far, they haven't. But the South Vietnamese also said that this operation would go on for at least two or three months and they plan to drive far deeper into Laos looking for the communist sanctuaries. Both American and Vietnamese officers say this invasion will save lives. some of the 57 Americans wounded during the first two weeks of the operation in support of South Vietnamese troops in Laos. 24 others have died. As the South Vietnamese have been hitting the Ho Chi Minh Trail, the communists have been retaliating with scattered attacks on both sides. They are brought into Quang Tri from remote bases strung out along the northern boundary of South Vietnam. The wounded are then flown to hospitals in Da Nang, Cameron Bay, and Saigon. The U.S. command points out, although there are 9,000 Americans massed south of the demilitarized zone,
the number of casualties so far has been light. But some military observers fear the communists could launch an all-out strike across the DMZ, causing the number of casualties to jump sharply. This is an entire regiment of elite South Vietnamese 1st Division troops, 19,000 of its best troops involved in the Laos invasion. American advisors packed Arvin troops into the helicopters. With their smaller stature, more Vietnamese can be carried in one helicopter than Americans can. Because of the ban on American ground participation in Laos, the advisors had to stay behind. One expressed regret, saying, there are rules that you don't like, but still you have to obey them. These particular Arvin troops had not fought in Laos previously. They seemed fresh, well-equipped, and determined. At the nearby headquarters of the paratroopers, who have been fighting in Laos since the beginning, the mood was less enthusiastic. These are airborne wounded, medevaced out of the combat area. The paratroopers have been in hard combat. Many have had more than enough. The figure on the skid of that helicopter is a man. The helicopter had been sent to evacuate some paratroopers from a forward combat zone. They rushed the airplane, mobbed it, trying to escape. The man clinging to the landing gear was shoved out of the overcrowded aircraft. He came home this way rather than stay behind in the fighting. But if the Laotian War is hard on the South Vietnamese, it's also tough on the Northerners. South Vietnamese fire base supports South Vietnamese Arvin paratroops inside Laos. It's well supplied with weapons and ammunition. But its operations are completely uncoordinated with those of an American mortar position a few hundred yards away. The Americans have responsibility for security on the Vietnamese side of the border. They know that the Laos operation comes first. They don't like it. American troops are supported by mortars, not artillery like the Vietnamese in Laos. The Cobra is the best of the helicopter gunships. When one of them passes overhead, the Americans know it's bound for Laos. Purely American operations must rely on support from the older and slower Hueys. Accustomed to having the best of everything, Soon-level American officers and NCOs resent being deprived to supply South Vietnamese troops, whom they generally dislike and distrust anyway. Do you think you're getting sufficient support up here on the Laotian border? 
No. We don't, uh, we don't get anywhere near the artillery support that people need. We've had uh, quite a few people out. Uh, we can't seem to get the fire missions in for them. Recon by fire. Contact grids. Uh, the only thing we have for them is mortars. And it uh, isn't, isn't doing the job in the, uh, in the heavy stuff. Well, I hear artillery over there. It doesn't fire. What's this for? Firing for other people. We're getting uh, food. I'm having a lot of trouble getting ammunition. Uh, we've put in uh, resupply orders for ammunition and have been told the ammunition is not available. When American infantrymen arrived for a combat sweep, they were carrying 90-pound packs. Helicopter resupply would not be available for them. The first call on supply helicopters has been given to the South Vietnamese. The infantry platoon moved down the road into the jungle, knowing that their needs now must come second to those of the South Vietnamese across the border. in direct charge of the American forces supporting the South Vietnamese operation in Laos is Lieutenant Jock Sutherland. He is the commander of the U.S. 24th Corps based at Da Nang. Since last month, General Sutherland has been operating out of an advanced headquarters closer to the action. He flies daily by helicopter for inspections of his own units and for conferences with his counterpart, South Vietnamese General Lam. We interviewed General Sutherland on his return from the field. General, one of the reasons for going in there, I understand, was the build-up you expected an attack here in the First Corps area. Have you uh, thwarted that yet? Well, I think we probably have already. I'm, I can't be sure of that, of course. But we, we were, we did have information that, that there was a large build-up of supplies uh, south of here in Base Area 611 in the northern Ashau Valley and the Dachron Valley, which uh, we interpreted as being preparation for uh, a large offensive in Quang Tri and Tua Tin this, uh, this spring and summer. Uh, in view of the casualties that we're inflicting on the enemy and the amount of supplies that are being destroyed, 
uh, I think that maybe already we've precluded that communist offensive for this summer. If the controversial Laotian operation has accomplished nothing more, it's the feeling of the general that it's already... Following the U.S. roadwork on Route 9, a 300-truck convoy of South Vietnamese troops and supplies began moving west toward the Laotian border. Some of these Vietnamese soldiers are army engineers, and they said they were going into Laos to continue the road work. Up to this point in the operation, the South Vietnamese, the Americans, and the communists had been doing more moving than fighting. The operation was launched because intelligence reports indicated to this part of the South. But the enemy was... And with other troops flying in from all over the country, it was evident... Nine battalions of the Arvin Airborne Division reportedly were in the Quang Tree area, waiting to move towards the Laotian border. The second battalion moved out first aboard American helicopters. Troops are stationed around Saigon. This is the first time that Arvin Airborne soldiers have been in the northern provinces of South Vietnam since Tet of 1968. They were cold, shivering troops in summer fatigues, hardly adequate to the dropping temperatures of northern South Vietnam. Most of the company commanders were as confused as everyone else as to just what was going on. The only thing of which they seemed certain was that they eventually would land in Laos. The operation, obviously, was under the control of American forces. All of the helicopters were manned by U.S. pilots and gunners. The ground control for the 15 helicopters used to move the Arvin troops forward were also American. At this point, it is difficult to tell with any certainty what form the overall operation in Laos will take. The news media in South Vietnam has been totally blacked out by the military. When and if newsmen will be permitted to go into Laos is still uncertain. Jim Bennett, NBC News, Quang Tri, South Vietnam. Laos to see for themselves what's happening. But the military has made that very difficult. 
These reporters and photographers were supposed to have been aboard a special American helicopter going into Laos. But instead, they were stranded at Ham Ni in Vietnam, a forward command post for the South Vietnamese Army. Although American helicopters daily make supply and troop runs into Laos, they haven't been allowed to carry reporters across the border. This provoked a series of angry protests from major news organizations to the Pentagon and the White House. Finally, the Defense Department agreed a limited number of newsmen would be a stay. General Lam said no newsmen could go into Laos, that there was too much fighting and it was too dangerous. It could be General Lam is genuinely concerned about the welfare of the newsmen. Four journalists died when a sound that might embarrass the South Vietnamese Army and the Nixon administration's Vietnamization program. George Lewis, NBC News, Quang Tri, South Vietnam bringing in supplies for the invasion of Laos by South Vietnamese troops. In addition, the Quezon base feeds supplies to American units operating in the region. The base covers a larger area than the Marine outpost did in 1968, with fewer troops. In line with the declining U.S. combat role in Vietnam, more of the troops here are builders and supplymen, fewer of them infantry. In the possible artillery attack. The Marines didn't dig in heavily until the base was under siege by 20,000 North Vietnamese troops. The Army hopes to learn from their unhappy experience. This is Ham Nghe, the South Vietnamese headquarters directing operations in Laos. And the ambulances were here early. It was a bad sign. They were waiting for wounded to be brought in from a helicopter gunship pilot who flew over Lolo described what he saw. Nothing there anymore. Helicopters were sent in for the wounded, and as the first of them retain, they're in the third and final phase of the Laos operation and that their plans call for fire support bases like Lolo to be abandoned anyway as their troops are moved closer to Vietnam. But there wasn't anything orderly or planned in getting these men out. They were overrun and defeated, and all the talk of a planned withdrawal seemed pointless. The South Vietnamese were retreating. Phil Brady, NBC News, at Ham Nghi. When the move across the border came, it was almost predictable. Arvin troops aboard armored personnel carriers. It was estimated that two brigades crossed into Laos by road. Bulldozers manned by South Vietnamese soldiers cleared the way for the APCs, going beyond the last American checkpoint and pushing into Laos. One Arvin military policeman put up a new sign right at the border. Like the American sign put up several days ago, 150 meters back from the border, this one again warned that American personnel were not allowed beyond this point. 
Helicopter gunships flew protective cover over the convoy as it penetrated into Laos. Convoys moved along the road, leading to the border in an almost continuous stream. Newsmen waiting at Quang Tree were herded aboard specially provided helicopters. They were told they may be going on a combat assault, where or with whom was not stipulated. Where the newsmen landed was at Quezon. It was an incredible scene. More than 100 helicopters were on the ground and more flying in all the time. They all came in empty and took off empty. It was obviously the staging area for the helicopter assault, but there were no combat troops visible to board them. When the choppers took off, they headed west toward Laos, apparently to a secret rendezvous with Arvin troops. All helicopter pilots were under strict orders not to talk to newsmen. One helicopter commander pushed this correspondent aside when he attempted to talk to one of his pilots, but not before the pilot admitted he had just come back from as far west as he cared to go. There were reports that at least one full Arvin division was assaulted by helicopter into Laos over a six-hour period. The number of helicopters landing at Quezon would tend to bear this out. Jim Bennett, NBC News at Quezon.